Four one. This is four one. Charlie, radio check over. Bam, and the timer has started. Hey team, how are we going? I've been speaking this in comments. Great to be here. If you're watching this after it's been on, or you've gone from the start, then welcome. Subscribe to the channel so that you can be part of comments. Get your freedom of speech over there, and um, I don't police it. Okay, if the people in blue, okay, they will. They're the moderators, but they'll let you go as well. You know, we're all accountable for our mouth these days. So um, let's have some fun. And today, the topic is don't be a target. What is a target? There's one in every group. Normally a mouth breather. You know, someone who thought they were ready for something they were not. Someone thought they were strong enough until they weren't. Today, we're talking about battle PT. My favorite PT, unless I'm the participant in it. Because Battle PT sucks. Here to tell you the facts, Jack. And um, let's start that off with a bit of a distraction in the background. This is a bit of Battle PT happening right now. Hey, Lucky, here you go, mate. Carl P, he knows what an attack it is. Tag it. Innocent until he meets a Cactus Jack's Fajita. Thank you very much there, Jake. Sounds tinny, just me. Uh, I'm not sure. Sorry, guys. Um, at the moment, uh, what a sec. Let me just turn it down just a little bit. That might be a little bit better. Um, guys and gals, uh, basically we're going to be talking about Battle PT today. If you join the military, you're going to be doing it. Okay, Battle PT is uh, normally uh, anything that you do in either clean skin, boots, pants, t-shirt as your PT gear. It might be full cams with boots. It may be in webbing. It could be patrol order with a friend, which is a bar that simulates a weapon system around the same weight of around 3.6 to 4.1 kilos. They can be heavier. It could be with actual weapons. It can be in marching order with your pack, webbing, everything. It is normally at least a double session of 80 minutes. It is normally outsourced to a PDI physical training instructor or someone like me, a combat fitness leader that was within your organization and we outsource it to make sure that no one listens to the screams of weakness that happens from amongst the group. Once it starts, we don't stop. It is a test at all ranks. It is a test of communication, of teamwork, of battle readiness, preparation. It is intense. Everyone hates it. And we're going to unwrap that today. Because Battle PT is what truly makes you battle ready. You can get injured. It's not good. It's not fun. Even the mouth breathers. That's right, Carl. Dwayne Duffy. Good evening. G'day, mate. How are you going? I also just had a fantastic conversation with Darcy, who's one of our two latest Patreon members. Guys and gals, if you are joining the Army and you are not on the Patreon, mate, you're doing yourself an injustice. Okay, you truly are. Um... Nathan is new as well, so a thumbs up to him as well. Foxy, there you go, mate. I got some uh, photos of some camels the other day. Foxy is a camel rustler. All right. What we got here? Ranger. Good night, Kaz. Uh, good night, Kaz, aren't we? Um, I'm not sure what that means. Uh, get amongst it, Foxy. Neville Bloody Bartos. How are you, mate? It's been a while. It has been, mate, but we know that you are welcome here. So there's some Battle PT happening there. There's guys at the back, some taggets, that are starting to get very, very nervous. These are British soldiers, and their commanders slash instructors are the ones in blue shirts who do it as well. But never um, take your eyes off the fact that those in the blue shirts, the instructors, are also observing the team members so that they can report on them later, you know. Simon Powell. Now, there's a man that would hate Battle PT. Uh, Evan Barry. Barry Evan. Howdy, mate. How are you? Sorry to hit you up on Saturday night. We missed last night, and I promised that I'd uh, that I'd pay this out today. Survival Man. G'day, mate. How you going? Toddy Markwell. Good to have you here. Uh, Morty. Mortician. Evening, everyone. The Ranger. How are you doing, Kaz? I'm doing well. I'm about to go down to uh, um, I'm about to go down to Melbourne. Okay, to speak to some of the bike clubs uh, in Victoria's public speaking event. They're very gracious to uh, ask me to come down 
And if people ask, I will answer the call, especially if it's for a good group of people. Um, so that drive starts on Monday. Therefore, there will not be a stream on Monday night. Um, looking forward to that. And we'll be talking about uh, brotherhood. We'll be talking about resilience. We'll be talking about journeys and what's ahead. You know, it's going to be a pretty deep conversation. You know, and for Dave Fuller, the head of the group, I really appreciate him trusting me to come back in their lounge room a second time. So without any further ado, let's get into this. I do, not a Jew. Just watch these guys in the background as they do what would be considered an intense session. These are British. Um, and this is their five mile, uh, sorry, three mile run, which is about 4.8 kilometers in, uh, in metric. Excellent topic. Thank you, Elite Sniper. The people that will do most of this will be people from Artillery Corps, people from Infantry Corps and Engineers. They're the three that really seem to get amongst the uh, the dirty work. So let's let you know. Again, boots and cams like we're seeing here. In Australia, we have a policy where they don't like you to run more than two kilometres in boots, but that doesn't make sense because we'll do a 40-kilometre pack march in boots but they don't want the impact when you're running, which doesn't make sense because at the end of the day, the boot is there to support the ankle. So then they make you do something with weapon with seven kilos weight in your webbing and water, you know, sometimes ammunition with joggers, which means you've got an unstable ankle. There we go. The push-ups, I love them. Love them. They are the best punishment. They leave no scars. They just leave capability behind, making the better version of you for fucking up. And that's what I like. It's a currency I... I enjoyed, and I did every push-up that I ever gave you, so no one complain or bitch. PT, done as an individual, you know, um, I, I think there's room for that every single week, that there should be two days a week where you go and do individual PT and potentially even parade at 9.30, you know, but are held to account for the PT that you do and there should be a BFA every single month so we can see if you pull the fat cord, fat, fat, fatty, you know, and you should be shamed for that because it's your job and you're supposed to be uh, an athlete. So what happens is let them do two individual PT sessions a week, you know, because when we're in barracks, we're also meant to be recovering and preparing for the next physical, you know, uh, field exercise, including Talisman Sabre, which is about to commence. Now, there should also be um, two uh, sessions run by a session commander, you know, and that is so he can bond with his men and he can either up it or down it, but maintain the fitness required and gauge his soldiers so he can report on them. But there should be one session a week, which is outsourced battle PT. And I'll give you some examples in a moment of what battle PT is and what you will hate and what you'll be scared of in a moment. But that should happen once a week. It is always intense. It always sucks. You know, but it gets the most out of people and it normally simulates a battlefield scenario. Yep. To exhaustion. Ranger. Cows love your videos. Uh, this is my third stream now. Thank you, Ranger. Thank you very much. You know, you're not being a target. Well done. Dog breath. Now, that's an awesome name. I got some dog breath today from Achilles. You know, nothing like the Greek hero, but I love the little bastard. If it was in Vietnam, they'd call him number 37 on the menu. They should get you speaking at schools in some uh, army payroll. Uh, Dog Breath, I was actually going to start public speaking at um, private boys' schools just before COVID hit, um, but then that happened, and this sort of got uh, blown out. So it's something I'd love to do. Today I spoke to Darcy, who's uh, at year 10 at school at the moment, and it was absolutely fantastic. It really was. Uh, okay, my battle buddy, uh, Todd, I won't say his last name, is on. Tell him to change his name. Uh, Toddy, change your name, mate, so that uh, the army never has a problem if you actually have something to say, okay, because sometimes the guns are facing inwards. Now, imagine these guys here. This guy's uh, doing these burpees there. He's clearly done something wrong. That's the platoon commander with the tattoos. That is what fucking leadership looks like, a big, tall man that women would want, some men would be scared of, someone that is confident, okay, someone who is aggressive, 
Someone looks like he can get you back. I wouldn't be surprised if he's an ex NCO, to tell you the truth. Um, so, Toddy, uh, you'll have to show me how. Okay, uh, Solomon's best boots for running. They're not bad, okay, but you won't get to choose those, mate. Um, it'll go via the uh, military boot selection. You know, and there's plenty of good ones. Solomon's probably aren't up to scratch um, once you start putting packs on and all that sort of shit. Um, Stevie Webb, I know Tasman Sabre is about to commence because a mate told me that. I am your mate, Steve. So I'll take that one. Uh, Neville, bloody Bartos is raf. It's been five months post-surgery. Uh, it's cooked, mate. Oh, that's not good. Stevie Webb, 30,000 troops uh, from 14 nations. Yep. Uh, Lion Lake is uh, full of US uh, Marines. I'm not that one. I don't know what that one's about. Is that? I've never heard of that place. Is that in Australia? Elite. Glad you enjoyed our conversation, Kaz. Uh, there we go. Thank you very much, mate. So we spoke about collective PT. That's what we're looking at there. Collective PT as a group, group outcome, group um, uh, sponsored by the platoon commander will normally get in contact with the PDI and say, you're going to run this so that he can't stop it. If he can't stop it, that means it's there to assess him as well. And he joins in with his uh, uh, Carter staff there. Uh, righto. So it can be things like CFA, combat fitness assessment that we used to do. It could be the PESA, okay, that we currently do now. There is the uh, support PESA, there is the combat PESA, and there's the infantry PESA. It could be used for rope runs. It could be for mill skills events. It could be for pack marches that can be anywhere up to 40 kilometers and beyond. It can be for the 3.2 kilometer run, which is the hardest physical activity that I believe you can do as a group in a com in competitive nature. And all of these things will all happen at the Duke of Gloucester Cup if you represent a battalion. Stretcher carry, swim test, Hewitt, helicopter underwater escape training, okay, the obstacle course, battle simulated activities. Even when you're doing dry firing attacks, it is still battle PT. It is orchestrated. It is reported on. It is controlled. Yeah, We need to do it. And it's what sets the combat corps apart from almost all of the rest of the army and also definitely from Air Force and Navy. The battle PT normally will, as I said, simulate something that can physically happen in a battlefield environment. Yep. There's some modifications that I think need to happen in the Australian Army, and that is no obstacle course should be done, I believe, especially at the School of Infantry or Kapuka, with your weapon and webbing. It's not meant to be to necessarily just teach or, or at least graduate. There should be the option of doing it clean skin, the way they are right now, but with a also long sleeve shirt on to protect the arms, right? and also create a little bit of uh, ambient heat so people uh, get acclimatized. But um, it should be done for speed, command, control, but essentially competition. You know, stretcher carries done to competition with a real individual on the stretcher. So you get used to the body roll of the person going back and forth. Who do you put on the stretcher? Not someone you like, someone you don't like. Because it sucks. You can get equivalent to seasick just by being on that goddamn stretcher. Look at these guys. They don't want to be last. I'm going to ring someone now who used to be in the military. Wait two seconds. For a second opinion. Evan, I'd be okay for swim testing. Depends what we do. Because a swim test can always come after something very, very physical as well. That's Carl from Brisbane Air Conditioning. Sorry, Mr. Call. I didn't expect that. Okay, the dentist. Uh, Jake, is this PT for infantry only? No, it's not. But they are the people that predominantly do it. And when you go to... Um, when you go and do uh, training for things like the selection, there's a stretch carry right there. Uh, for special forces uh, consideration selection, then there'll be a hell of a lot of battle PT. You know, um, battle PT is not a 40-minute session team. It can be as long as the imagination of an activity of a commander that says, I want to test these men. 
It can also be a competition, and I'd encourage this for commanders to actually um, test their soldiers against each other. Okay, don't say your name. Hi, mate. Hey, how you going? We're talking about Battle PT and not to be a target. <laughs> yeah, don't be a target. Okay, now I know that you love PT, but you do admit that it's scary when you turn up not sure whether you'll be up to the task, yeah? Yep. But one... look, around and see, see, look around and see the faces who's, uh, who's freaking out. That's right. And the fitter you turn up, the less scared of it you'll be because you know that people will collapse with heat uh, illness before you will. Yeah. The key is don't overdo your part. Don't try and compensate so much for the weakness in your other soldiers that you end up blowing um, your heart rate through, through the, the, the frickin' roof and then you collapse. Yep. Start hitting the gym now. You'll be a beast, uh, Morty. Yeah, keep away from the gym team. Uh, Stay in your lane. Yeah, don't go to the don't go to the gym <coughs> to prepare for army. Go go to a a gym, but go for a boot camp so that you yeah, get used well. to circuit training and also training for forty minutes at a pace that you're not used to. Yeah. Well, if you are going to go to the gym. Do circuit weights, do circuit stuff. Yeah. Get and on the battle ropes and things. You don't need to sit there doing stupid bench press and stuff. Do the chin-ups, do the push-ups. Use a bit of the equipment for a circuit. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm not a I'm not a fan of that either. You know, I think that if you're not doing your PT as part of a session, especially if you don't have a, a pedigree in fitness and actually know what it's like to be elite level fit. Okay, then you're likely to train by yourself so you never have to truly train that hard. You can quit whenever you want. Now, Definitely. when you train with an instructor in a civilian gym or a military gym and you let them know that you're going to be part of the military, then they are going to push you hard but push you safe. Yep. Yeah. 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 Neville Bardos. Todd, he's, uh, he's still scared, Kes. Absolutely. <laughs> Ethan Jarvis, oh. non, uh, non-combat, do this as well. They do, they do, but very rarely, very rarely. Um, and I used to be open. Like we used to do boxing as well as, as a battle PT uh, training, but on the bags and would simulate and have a storyline. It was great and it went with great music. Great fitness. Yeah. The, the best way you can do this, I would say, dentist, is that when you outsource your PT to someone, to test your sections against each other in a competitive way to rank them. An example of this would be three sections with all of their equipment, their webbing, their section equipment, and the platoons turn up with their role. And then from there, it is a time trial. The platoon goes, then the next platoon goes, then the next platoon goes. And the time that you're looking at for a good 3.2 kilometer run with all of your equipment and seven kilos in your webbing is 16 minutes 30 by Special Forces standard. Now, as a platoon, you will not hit that 3.2 at 16 and a half minutes, but you will should have to be under 20 minutes or do it again. Now, yeah, and you're only as, fit, only as fast as your slowest team member. No, that's not true either. You're as fast as your second or third slowest because if you are the slowest, you will get physically dragged. I don't care about your feelings, you know. The only person that has an excuse to be going slower is the person with the gun or the person that's over 100 kilos of natural fight weight. Mm. Yep. Yeah. Because if you can't do this, then you're going to flag and you're going to fail when you actually get to something hard that you don't expect in a field environment. Yeah. Yep. Very, very exciting. Very, very hard, but very, very rewarding. Look at that old bastard. Yeah. Look at him. If you're old and you're at the back, uh, you're proving why it's a young man's game. And, uh, yep. Mm. That's it. So tell me about a PT session you've done that made you breathe from your mouth and secretly beg for it to stop from within. Even just doing weapons drills when you're um, and they're running around a paddock, getting everybody moving in full combat gear and trying to do basic weapon drills when you're um, 
you're fatigued, it just gets that um, all your concentration out the window, right? Once you start start breathing. Yep. And uh, simple stuff can just make people hot, make make people hurt. You know. Yep. And when it's battle simulation, that means everyone actually gets to see who is the runt in their litter. Yep. So people can talk a big talk, but you can't, when you're the one that is at the very back, everyone will remember that because when they get to the point, they'll turn around, they'll look in the face, who is making us do it again? Set a time and punish people if they don't make that time. And they won't get angry at the PDI. They won't get angry at the platoon commander. They'll get angry at the soldier that turned up who's internally fat. <laughs> you know? yep, yep. Yeah. And there's a lot of yep. skinny fat bastards out there, if you know what I mean. People with yep. um, a lack of ticker. You know, look at this. The, the DS at the moment, the session commanders are watching these guys and they are doing push ups and being punished because there's people that are skinny fat bastards coming up the background there. They are the targets. Look at them. The fittest people <laughs> suffer because of the guys at the back. Yep. Yep. That is hashtag target. <laughs> do the work. Do the work. What do you reckon, right. Toddy? Do you know? Do you know a? Do you know a target in your unit? <laughs> Look at these guys. Yep. Hey, mate. I'm gonna go. My Uber Eats are here. Ah, oh, there you go. Internally fat. Internally fat. It's rice, so that's fine. Bullshit. You're you're checking out all these raised butts here. The 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 hello sailor position. <laughs> yeah, I'll jump back in the stream. Okay, copper. See ya. We're just having a bit of sense of humour there, team. A bit of sense of humour. Okay, so let's go over those again. Rope run was one of my favourite activities. The reason why the rope run is a fun activity is everyone has an arm on the rope. From there, I can tell people there is no. Um, communication other than what I say or those delegated. So quite often what I'll do is the platoon commander can shut his mouth. You know, the session commanders can shut their mouth. The platoon sergeants can shut their mouth. And what it will be is I will give private soldiers the chance to be those commanders. And what that does is um, it reinforces that everyone needs to be able to step up and command at any time. It heaps responsibility onto those guys under fatigue. And you can even make the unfit people those that have to be able to do the communication because then that actually sends a message to them that your fitness is below the standard required even if they can pass a BFA, the basic fitness assessment. It also tells them that they are not field worthy, operational ready, okay? And then they work on it. We do after action reviews. Where when it's over, we don't talk about what we do well. We talk about where we were bad and make people take accountability of where we're at. Don't get me wrong. Every single person is going to be absolutely knackered at the end. Yep. And you don't go back and necessarily have a shower. You might do this and then go into the day's work. Yep. A really good one would be a race between people okay, to dig a shell scrape. That'd be a fantastic way of doing a teaching lesson. There can be ways that you could do this to earn a t-shirt, to earn a day off. We're flagging a little bit there at the back. What's happening there? Wait two seconds. Uh, background. How are we? Uh, Joshy Fawns, Mr. Buckaroonie. Is Mr. Buckaroonie here? Or did you just come out with that, Joshy? Definitely got a few, says Toddy. There we are. Okay, anyone else that's on? Okay, make sure you subscribe so you can speak in comments. You know, let us know what the hardest event you've ever done. Duke of Gloucester Cup is the hardest I've ever had to work, and that was because we are doing a 3.2 as the second, fourth battalion competing against one RR, three RR, six RR, five, seven, you know, uh, did I say six? Eight, nine. And um, yeah, it was absolutely agony. Yeah, and that was at uh, the School of Infantry. Don't they have things like cross country races? They do, but that'll be in paddle uh, in normal PT gear, and that's also an individual race, mate. So that would be just as you'd normally go and do a PT session. And the way that used to work in Townsville 
was it was 11 kilometers and you had to run under uh, uh, well, it was almost 11 kilometers and you had to run under 10 hour uh, you had to run under 45 minutes or do it again uh, Neville Bardos I got out in 2002 okay old as dirt says Simon you're the same age as me look at these guys the tough thing here is you have to have a bit of common sense team some of these guys are, you know, are running to the front Okay, you've got to be careful because you don't know how long this session is going to go or what is going to follow it and what might be coming next. You can gauge yourself on how hard the session commanders are going because if they're holding a bit back, then chances are they know something that you don't know that might be coming up. Now, one of the best activities we do at the School of Infantry for the guys going through the School of Infantry Singleton, the session, is the equipment carry where there's logs, where there's um, ammo boxes, where there's jerry cans but still have to carry the guns and their webbing etc and it's at pace and then they do the obstacle course at the end and the reason why it's a great one is because we'll always make sure there's enough that one person doesn't have anything doesn't carry anything and the whole point about that is so that we can start the communication between people to rotate through equipment but it also allows someone to be the jack man the tag it okay and potentially opt to carry the least for the longest amount of time and then that will be seen by peers and that can be a self-assessing you know criteria as well yeah uh stevie webb i think it was on uh Jamison's travels channel when he talked about iron marshmallows people who were chubby but fit <laughs> there you go and we've definitely got those remember there's three types of people that you've got you've got the endomorph is the guy that will get fat eating salad okay and then you've got the ectomorph the guy that could basically live on kentucky gravy and still have a six-pack okay and then you've got your mesomorph which is a guy that doesn't necessarily need to go to the gym but always has a fantastic crack and chassis you know natural big boy his fight weight is impressive jake uh, Andy Fury, do you have a role in mind? Do you have uh, plenty of time to consider so don't stress uh, too hard, mate? There you go. Uh, range of plans for infantry. Yep. There is a place for everyone. There is. There is a core for everyone, but there's not a place for everyone in infantry. Everyone has to be uh, have that as a primary skill set to get through Kapuka, but they may never touch it again in their military career. You know, the, the, one of the saddest things is when someone is born with a body that doesn't match their enthusiasm and um, it'd be like being a red-haired stripper. You know, you're screwed. You're not going to make any money, are you? <laughs> that could be one of my better ones. I'm 53 going in as combat support driver, okay? Combat support driver. I don't know where the word combat comes into that. I think it'd be just driver. There's a place for everyone. Yep. Uh, if I could be a driver and get those tickets and then go back on the road and do long haul driving there, Evan, and listening to podcasts, I'd love that. Imagine going away for 10 days, driving, you know, sleeping in the cab, listen to, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, no Limits podcast, uh, listening to Joe Rogan, you know, getting smarter by the day. Uh, Zero Limits podcast, sorry. And then uh, coming back and then getting uh, uh, a water cash, put it in the stock market, do it again. Fantastic. Uh, not if you are a bloke. What's this one? Simon, Neville Barros, it's not uh, jaded. It's uh, standard. Everyone believes it's better on the other side. It's not. Uh, do you have a role in mind? Okay. I'm not sure what that one's about. Uh, guys and gals, you know, the thing is with the military these days, you, you're choosing what you're going to do, yeah? And when you choose what you do, you've got to be realistic with yourself. So just make sure that if you come from a fitness pedigree, okay, then you're probably going to be okay. But if you're not, just remember, it, it is a really hard graft to stay fit in your career forever. It really is, and it takes it out on you. It really does. Yeah, I'm going to be doing a marathon listening to uh, Zero Limits, uh, with my drive down to, um, uh, to Victoria. It's going to be great. Uh, Evan, 
drive already, but love the, the military lifestyle. There you go. There you go. Imagine knowing when you're in the truck, you don't have to change your clothes and no one cares either, Evan. Fantastic. It's almost like pyjamas. Listening in the trenches with Kaz while on the road. I like that, Carl. I like that. But I can't recommend myself, really. Um, yeah, what else is going on? I know it's Saturday night, team, but we did promise because we weren't on Friday night. And today, I think it's important to talk about something like Battle PT and understand it is the true way to get the gains and it is the least requested PT session from commanders uh, due to the fact that it is so hard and it normally encompasses training the platoon commander, taking the power off him and the platoon sergeant and the session commanders and the two ICs as well. Yep. I also want to try and get in commandos. Yep, yep. And if you put a number on these guys' arms at the moment, that's what it would look like. Turn up, candidate number one through to fucking 125. You know, you're just a number, and they just write observations on how you go. Were you community, communicative? Were you, uh, where were you in the front, middle, or back of the pack? You know, did you quit? Did you meet the time? Okay, what were you like under pressure? Uh, sleeping on a tank run. I don't know what that means. Oh, okay. We do battle runs in uh, armoured vehicles. That's a good a good sleep for infantry. Doing sit-ups as we speak. Backpack a lack. You know, uh, well done. The core is the most important part of our bodies. And by doing the sit-ups, working on the core, you'll also improve your push-ups. The best way to improve your push-ups, as a matter of fact, there's probably two things. One is planking. If you can plank for three minutes, that's going to add a bunch of push-ups to your score. Also, um, if you do re the, re the resistance training, look at having the Olympic bar with no more than 20 kilos on each side. If, you, if that's too much for you, 10 kilos each side and go for as many reps as you possibly can before you have to rack it and do three sets of that with five minutes in between to allow the creatine phosphate levels to rebuild in your arms 30 seconds should give you back 50%. Two minutes should give you 100%. I don't believe that. I reckon five minutes is the go because you can't do maximum chin-ups and then two minutes later do maximum chin-ups. It doesn't work that way. But uh, if you can do that, your push-ups will improve because normally when you see people doing sit-ups, uh, uh, sorry, push-ups, they fail just after they've started lagging in the center of their body because they can't actually hold that frame. Then what happens is all the pressure goes on to the anterior deltoid. When it fails, they start to shake like a lady touched by Kaz. And then one to two later, done. Okay. So get in there, do those muscular endurance exercises on the bench. Okay. And do the three-minute prone hold and you're going to be laughing. You can be welcome to the 100 push-ups in two-minute club. Put your hand up if you're part of that. Yep. I've been bringing uh, the Zero Limits podcast at work. Uh, I've seen uh, vinyl records at the moment. I need something to listen to and learn from. There you go, Jake. You could always give me a call and I'll talk to you. Uh, Joshy Fawns, I've got to take a photo. What of, sir? Paparazzi. Okay, Todd, Todd Ken. There we are. So group assessment, tests all levels, scenario-based, outcome-heavy, uh, outsource PDIs, double sessions as a minimum normally, you know, in boots, in webbing, with a weapon, or marching order. Now, you will be doing this in all corps, um, regardless of whether you're support or combat corps, um, and you'll be doing uh, corresponding to those. You know, um, we used to do a CFA, which used to have, uh, it used to start off with uh, the 15 kilometer pack march as a collective group as opposed to PESA, which is 15 kilometers infantry individual. The reason why it was great that it was done as a group was you might be able to pass, but you might not be able to keep up with the collective tactical group. Not that it's a tactical exercise, the, the CFA, but that went for 15 kilometers. Okay, and then from there, when you came back, you had to climb the rope twice. Okay, all of this disappeared after females joined uh, the military and combined into combat corps. 
Um, and then you would do the RDJ, the run, the run, dodge, jump, and you had to do that in under 45 seconds. And there was a special step for female soldiers to be able to get over the wall. Um, as yeah, okay, we won't talk about butt sizes, you know. Um, but then you would also do a fireman carry where you would uh, carry the other individual with their seven kilos of webbing and their weapon 100 metres in uh, under 45 seconds or a minute or something like that. So that was the old test. And then they got rid of it. Uh, we used to do 40 kilometre pack marches at least once a year. They got rid of those too. Brisbane used to do 80 kilometres. I heard the hardest core in uh, the Air Force where you have to sit in a chair for five hours straight. <laughs> Ranger. Uh, ask Simon. See if there's any validity. I have to do 15 push-ups. Don't hate me. Hate the system. Uh, yeah, but 50 push -up, 15 push-ups won't even get you through a wank. You know, so if you turn up and do that, people there'll be someone like me waiting to torture you and watch you get dragged by the hair that you have by your team if you're the if you're the run to the litter. So make sure you turn up ready. Uh, Jake, in your eyes, what is the best optimal number of push-ups, pull-ups, and sit-ups? Uh, do you think the current ADF requirements are enough for people to get in? Okay, I think that's a great question, and. I don't expect everyone to reach elite levels of capability. Would I like it? Yes. Okay. So what I would say is, I believe that the uh, the BFA for every single person should be to be able to run the BFA 2.4 in under 10 minutes 30. I believe the push-ups should be 50 push-ups. And I believe that the sit-ups should just simply be a uh, not the hip flexors that we do, but it should be a two to three minute, maybe three minute pl uh, plank. Yep. Because I don't believe that our BFA sit-ups, our hip flexors, do anything for us. It's just we've done it because all armies do sit-ups. I believe the plank is a fantastic way to uh, test our transverse abdominal muscle strength. And I believe that is a really great way to um, strengthen our lower back to protect us, okay, from the rigors of carrying a pack, running with equipment, and uh, the jolts that happen from being in armored vehicles. That's what, that's, if you ask me, that's it. And there should also be a 200 meter swim component as well, and jumping from heights into water, as well as uh, potentially, okay, uh, the ropes should come back, I believe. Going up the ropes twice was a great way to test someone's physical ability to lift their own body weight with equipment. Because if you can do that, you can assume they can do everything else. And for working so hard, then we'll bring in no more uh, rifles and webbing, etc., on an obstacle course. And I'll tell you why. One, it doesn't actually really achieve anything. We can, we can do mini courses on how to do uh, two-man, three-man lifts, uh, whatever, in the urban uh, environment, if you are fighting up in built-up areas. But what happens on the obstacle course, all it means is there's no equity of equipment because there's going to be some people carrying a gun, some people carrying a stire. You know, and it's not about what's fair, but it's not a fair test of ability. Okay. Also, you've got people well above two metres where they're not actually strapped onto anything they're not tethered you know which is a legal requirement of every industry except the australian army i think you know and we're doing it multiple times to fatigue levels where it's exhaustion now if we're going to do everything else within the australian army to ohs that's probably one that makes sense don't make people go five meters in the air fatigued wet you know on wood that can fail as well Flipping over, getting a bit of head rush after doing 400 metres of physical activity. I'm not a fan of that, and I'm not a fan of the monkey bars at the obstacle course, where instead of going beneath them, we go across the top. No side rails, where if you were to fall, it's going to be two and a half metres, potentially falling awkwardly and ending a soldier's career for fucking what? Yeah. I don't, I don't agree with it. And you never see the CO do it. Uh, I'm going as a medic. We need medics, Jake. 
However, due to family history, I might uh, try and pursue the career in SOCOM. Okay, do that. Special, uh, Special Operations Command. Neville Bardas, that's all uh, I have to do in the RAF. The Army instructor just, just laughed on combat uh, engineering IT that we, we have to. Yeah, having said that, but Neville, you never know what is going to be asked of you by nature or by your career. You know, like I always say to people, although it's great to be really, really fit, it's also important that you live a fit, robust lifestyle for as long as you can in life to offset... Um, the aging process and um, our bone density uh, getting worse as we get older. So, you know, never make a joke of your own fitness. It's very, very important that we maintain it. And when I look at how far I've fallen from what I used to be in such a short period of time, believe me, team, it's a real thing. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of people here in chat that are older that can tell you what it feels like when uh, gravity actually starts to uh, play with you. Mm. Uh, where are we, Joshy Ranger? I have a replica F-88. It feels uh, close to the real thing. I only know this because I handled one for air tech day training. There you go, Ranger. Uh, they make uh, me out to be ex-communicado. Uh, I'm not sure what that is. Uh, SAS. Oh, there you go. Well, these guys, again, they're paying the penalty because others are late. How are we going here, team? That's, that's not a bad turnout when you consider tonight is um, a Saturday. Yeah, very nice. Very nice. Uh, Josh, uh, uh, Jay, straight into it. Arcane, g'day, Kaz. Mate, hope you're well. I am, Arcane. I am well. Um, I've got a, um, a mouth abscess over here taking some um, antibiotics for that. Uh, the reason why that's pertinent is, one, I'm talking to you guys at the moment, and two, I'm about to do a formal speaking engagement in Victoria. So, um, yeah, look at these guys. Look at these hard hitters. Let them go. You can tell that their combat core. Look at them. Every single one of them. Well, that's a love handle there, but watch out, mate. That'll creep up on you. Travis, I'm, uh, I'm late. It's okay, Travis. We're talking about Battle PT here, mate. The importance of it. That's the platoon commander in the background. Good looking young man. Looks like he could get the girl he wants if he wanted her. Serbia, uh, Serbian born. G'day, mate. Welcome, Serbia. Hey, guys, how hard is the assessment test? It's not hard, mate. The assessment test when you go to get in is made up of two things. The assessment is uh, whether I'll have a communication with you and they're going to be... Serbian, what I recommend you do, mate, if you're going in next week and you're nervous, is get on the Patreon and I'll talk to you in the next uh, 72 hours and we'll guide you through the process. But in the absence of that, what I would say to you is um, the assessment is a, a twofold operation and I believe it's even separated now where they're going to communicate to you with what you unlocked in your aptitude test um, and understand that that aptitude test, when you did that, is is going to um, gel with the three choices I hope that you delivered that you had. And they're going to tell you, yes, you have, etc. You may have even unlocked other things. You know, from there, they're going to ask you what you know about the military, you know, what your choices are, you know, why do you want to go there, etc. They're going to talk to you about a, a psychology assessment. They're going to do a medical assessment. Make sure you haven't got a chicken wing sticking out your anus, you know, which is called a hemorrhoid, um, and look for hernias, all of those sort of things as well. They're going to ask you about drug use. They're going to ask you about depression. They're going to ask you about previous medical conditions. Okay. Although it's not a confession session, it is a legally binding document, so be careful. Have you ever tried marijuana? You've never tried marijuana. Okay. Hey, Jay, how you going, Western Australia? Jake, are there any uh, do's and don'ts when it comes to the, to the heat of the moment when getting punished for another's mistake? Is there anything you can do to, present, to prevent uh, discover or decline in morale within a unit? No, if you turn up a runt, you're going to pay for it, pretty much. Yep. Yep, turn up prepared. You know, you'll get away with it a little bit at Kapuka. 
You won't get away with it much at the School of Imagery. You won't get away with it in the battalion. Yep. Work on your weaknesses and you'll find you're fine. You know, if everyone is trashed, there has to be someone comes last, just like in an Olympic marathon. That's fine. We won't judge you hard for that. But we will if we see you, you know, treating an ice cream like it's your best friend on the daily, you know, and you're getting fat and then you can't perform. You're getting out of field exercises, you know, and then you're doing bad at PT and we start to suffer because of it. Uh, so I really want to uh, join, but I'm dumb in tests. Okay, Serbian born. Okay, guys, we're going to um, we're going to move off the battle PT for two seconds because I explained this to a very uh, nice young man today who's just joined us on Patreon, and he was asking about um, how not to be a target in the aptitude test. You know, and basically I explained. You know, if you're looking at why do you have to do things twice? Why is there an education requirement to pass English and maths at school at the year 10 level, but then you also do an aptitude test? That is because school is a memory test. It's not an intelligence test. The aptitude test is not there to see if you're at retardation level you know, at about 80 to 84 IQ or less that prevents you from being a military soldier. It's about seeing what you are capable of. A list of jobs where there's tiers of IQ that will do perfectly in those but might not be up to the level of some others. But let's use Serbia born, for example. Let's just say that his choices are uh, infantry, engineers and intelligence uh, community intelligence core and then he scores in the top percentile that wouldn't have come up in his year 10 certificate but comes up in his aptitude test that this guy has scored elon musk level then they might say to you okay mate you've really blown it out of the charts instead of intelligence core infantry or um, maybe uh, engineers have you considered pilot training maybe even handballing him over to the RAF uh, or rotary wing, wing aircraft in aviation army? Have you considered going to an OSB officer selection board and being an officer? So it's not all bad, team. It's about seeing what your parameters, the book ends on what you can do, which you may not realize you're capable of. They always say a dumb man doesn't know he's dumb and a smart man doesn't understand why you don't understand him. I made that up. But one that is real is a saying, and I'll say this for Cowboy before I read his uh, comment, a famous saying from uh, Pakistan is never look down on someone else unless you're helping them back up. That's a nice saying. Okay, um, I'm doing practice tests. You don't really need to, sir, because at the end of the day, you can't really stuff with your IQ. You will basically be in the same percentile every single time, every single test. Okay, the difference being, it will teach you not to dwell on questions prematurely. You know, if you can't answer it straight away with conviction, move on to the next one. Move on to the next one. And don't just throw an answer in unless it's right. So Cowboy says, G'day, Warriors. First time caller, long time listener. Thank you, mate. Uh, you're an inspiration. Was told by medical I'm unfit due to torn hip tendon. He's gutted. But I'm still ar uh, arduous fire, uh, firefighter, RFS, Rural Fire Service. Got two years wait. Mate, Koi boy, you, you're clearly a special lad, mentally resilient. You've got a, uh, a fantastic uh, mindset and attitude there. You know, sometimes I wish mine was like that too because I slip up sometimes as well. I can be a skinny, fat bastard mentally. Travis, I must say that uh, that's a pretty awesome hat bash you have in your thumbnail, Kaz. It's, yes, it is. You know, and it got that bend in it from ladies, how are we doing? And kids, listen to your family. Yeah. That's what happens in North Queensland, mate. If you don't give it a bend, Okay, then the wind will push it off and the sun will be in your eyes. 
Uh, Kaz, uh, sorry, Morty Studios. Kaz, what kind of questions would you get on the aptitude test? No idea. I did it um, over 30 years ago, mate. And every single test, Morty, will be different. If you're sitting beside five people, there'll be five different tests. So don't try and cheat either. Uh, Jay Hayes, take care all and stay safe. Not too cow to Western Australia. Not too cow to you there, Jay Hayes. One of our longest and most loyal okay, individuals on this um, channel. Part of the family. To admit again, mucho respecto. Mucho respecto to you, JH. Jake, I never did great in high school, neither did I. But I knew all the girls' names. I only just passed. However, once I did my ADF aptitude test, I managed to get 98% of jobs in the ADF. <gasps> Available for me to choose. So never think grades equals ability. No, it doesn't. It's a memory game. Neville Bloody Bartos, that's his full name, is sitting in front of the fire having a few. Uh, life could be worse. It could absolutely be worse, Neville. Yep. Uh, Backpack a lack. How long until you sent uh, to training if you choose your infantry? I watched a video. It seems some people have to wait ages while others. Every single person, backpack, is um, a different case. Every single person is a different story. If you turn up and absolutely no red flags appear, then you might be straight straight through, especially if there's a, um, a, a priority role at that moment. Okay, everyone that takes a long time normally has a mitigating circumstance on why it's taking a long time. Serbian, even if I have uh, an IQ of a donkey, can I still pass a test? No. No, there is people that still fail it, mate. Okay, and you can fail it by just trying to get something down for every single question, you know, just to finish for the sake of finishing. So be careful of that. Kaz, where is your speech held in Victoria? Uh, nah, mate, it's um, it's a closed group, mate. It's a it's a closed group. It's um to the biker clubs, mate. Uh, Ranger. Hey, Kaz, any games, uh, any games do you like and recommend to people? Well, I honestly reckon this uh, space uh, game is going to be a fantastic one. Looks like it's going to be great. I forget what it's called. Uh, space, uh, yeah. Any little tips uh, for the U session, Kaz? The U session, uh, absolutely elite, is go in there knowing in order what three roles you'd like to do and why, and a little bit about why you chose them. And I'll, and I'll tell you something, elite, elite sniper, the reason why you need to go in there with those selections is because if you go in there and say infantry, 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 there's a really big high percentage of the person on the other side of the table is an in infantry, and almost everyone in the army that is not in an arms corps has a little bit of a bent towards infantry. I think it, it's jealousy to an extent. Um, it is, I don't know, it's one of those punching up sort of um, mentalities. You know, I think they think that we judge them or think that infantry is the only job in the army, but it's not. It's just the job that has the most sporting ethos. It is the one that has the most mateship. Engineers be bloody close. And it has got the largest contingent of lowest rank people, so that gives you a better chance over a longer period of time to be able to speak freer in darker humor, you know, as you go on adventures with the mateship. So that's the reason why. And when someone thinks soldier, 100% of people normally think of the infantry soldier before any other corps. It's normally, okay, because we're used to the, the foot soldier, the cavalry, and the artillery because yeah, that's what one thing is we've had in common for uh, basically the duration of all uh, professional armies since uh, Gaius Marius brought them in. Jake says, I've been waiting for 14 months now. I'm going for medic and still waiting. I know, uh, you know what's happening, man? Medic is normally always full. They're trying to push you into another core. That's what's happening. Have you considered going into another core, Jake, and then maybe even going across to medics from within? 
because uh, if you go to infantry and then switch to medics, guess what? You'll be a better medic, guaranteed. Backpack. My three roles are infantry, combat engineer, and electrician. Well, electrician will be in engineers, so make sure you switch that into combat engineer, and now you have a third choice. I'd, for you, I'd say armored core, mate. Ranger. I love Fallout New Vegas, Kaz. Uh, do you have a gaming channel? Nah. Um, I will tell you something, but we do love Dark Humor KP. Um, I've just contracted a, an IT guy uh, that we're friends with, Ryan, from the channel, um, who will be coming over to do a complete revamp of this channel, okay, so that we can get our alerts back up, so we can have a template with all the glowing insignia and things that make it special again, like we used to have but lost. <coughs> so we're paying him to come over, and he's going to do a bloody great job here for your viewing pleasure. So that's coming on too. We're going to um, do a bit of a conclusion here, team. Uh, in conclusion, Battle PT is the best PT. It's the hardest PT, but people stick away from it because of the complexity and the difficulty of it. You know, it is the absolute pinnacle of hard collective training to get a tangible physical capability reward for your actions. It is normally mission-based. Uh, it is a deliberate activity that is set up by an outsourced commander using his mental agility to give you the best product possible. But it also means immersion by all commanders to also test their command and control of their forces. It is uh, able to go into reports it is able to test, it is able to stack and rank the abilities of the soldiers within your call sign, or in fact, minor call signs, fire teams, sections, platoons, okay, or even companies within a battalion environment. The ultimate culmination of Battle PT is the Duke of Gloucester Cup that is carried out every single year by the Infantry Corps which will take a section of each battalion and pit them against each other in what is normally a four-day activity, uh, which doesn't guarantee any sleep. And the, the winner of that will go over to the Cambridge Patrol in the UK to represent Australia over there. It doesn't get harder. <sighs> Bring out your best. You know, okay, if, if there was anything harder or comparative, it would be the, uh, the selection course which would be harder because it's four times longer for special air service. Yeah. So I recommend it. If you're a commander that's currently in the military, you know, or you want some advice on training soldiers, remember I am a fitness leader. I believe I ran over 3,000 uh, formal lessons in my life as a PT. Then get involved on the uh, phone and we will sort your platoon out together. Do that. Don't be afraid to contact me for the price of a cup of coffee. Let's do it together. Teamwork makes the dream work. See you later, guys. Have a great weekend. Do it to them before they do it to you. Christopher East, Battle Fitness is everything. It is, but it sucks when you're doing it. If you didn't pass high school math, what are your options for meeting that requirement? Lane, I've got no idea. I believe it would be to go through the TAFE and get the year 10 pass that is required. You know, Because we can't Turn back time. Thank you very much for that, Simon. Damn, the stream is almost finished already. That's an hour. Straight up. Look at this guy. He's happy to be getting out of there. All right, that's... Uh, I forget what his name is. Fantastic channel. See you later. See you soon. That's Kaz. Out of here. Peace to your mother.